All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming to our second hour about our new anti-racism resolutions. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, service, these have just recently been adopted by our church council. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of background and information on how this all came about, and then some previews on coming actions for our church. All right. So first of all, in uh, 2020, as all you remember, that was in the middle of COVID, our Northern California Nevada Conference of the UCC um, adopted anti-racism resolutions. And what each congregation uh, was supposed to do is bring those back to the congregation for discussion and to see if any of the recommendations were um, worthy of follow through at the church level. Well, because it was COVID, so many things have been were postponed and we weren't able to go over those until uh, just at the beginning of this year. Well, I always say the school year is the beginning of the year. So in, in September, <laughs> we started, uh, the anti-racism team started looking at the NCNC resolutions. And after a period of months of discussion, we brought our recommendations to church council in November, was it November? I think it was November. Um, and then uh, they were adopted um, uh, right after that. I'm not sure if there was a December vote. No, I think they were adopted. After they adopted, November. okay, uh, adopted in November. So we have, um, we have had them written down. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is tell you a little bit of background on the four resolutions that the NCNC adopted, and they're not on this paper. <laughs> so uh, one of the resolutions was around ensuring that all of the conference ministers have had an extensive course in anti-racism. And so I wanted to um, let Pastor Eric tell a little bit about that because both he and Pastor Todd have participated in that training. So I haven't participated yet. I'm signed up to participate this year. Um, but uh, so to be um, or to hold standing within the Northern California Nevada Conference, all authorized ministers have to, um, one, report continuing education units of 20 hours per year. They have to go through boundary training every, I think it's five years. And then every three years, they have to take anti-racism training. And so because this was adopted in 2020, Pastor Todd and I have until the end of this year to um, take our anti-racism course and meet that requirement. If for some reason we're not able to um, fulfill the requirement, we then have to go before a committee on ministry to receive an extension. Um, but it is critical for us to take this training to keep our standing and therefore pastor in this local church um every three years so it's it's pretty intense and we're, we're glad for it so all right wonderful um one of the other resolutions that the conference passed has to do with um something that is doesn't exist anymore. And that is our camp, our wonderful camp that um, our conference used to operate. They wanted to make sure that uh, people of color were well represented both as far as the camp staff and uh, preference would be given to students of color, children of color who would attend the camp as well. Unfortunately, the camp has closed and so that resolution isn't able to be enacted, but I think this is still on the books. Should the conference reinstate a camp of some sort, that would be uh, something that the conference would continue to strive towards. The last two resolutions are the ones that our anti-racism team discussed and adopted. So um, we'll go ahead and start referring to this paper. And I believe that Doug Leach is going to share his screen with the people on Zoom to hear more about this. All right. 
So the first resolution is called Making Amends for a Colonizing Past. And so this is about learning and uh, acknowledging our inherited history, praying for repair and right relationship, and taking courageous and humble action for land protection and justice. So this is in relation to our indigenous brothers and sisters who are um, striving towards um, greater acknowledgement and recognition for the, the stewardship of the land that we're on. You may have noticed that the pastors have been consistently doing a land acknowledgement during the service, and that is one of the things that the council has uh, agreed upon. Um, additionally, we would like to develop a land acknowledgement that we put in all of our written material from the church. That's just part of our printed and official materials from our church, uh, maybe on our website and also in our um, official documents. And so there's there will be a committee that will be working on developing that written acknowledgement. And so that is one of the uh, actions. Part of that is to educate ourselves about land acknowledgements and make sure that we are acknowledging the right group of people, the um, the way that we that we should. And um, so even though we would love to just simply adopt the words that our pastors are using, we want to be really thoughtful about this and make sure that we're doing the right thing. This might also require us to hear from uh, indigenous speakers and have our church become more educated uh, around the needs of indigenous communities in our area. And so that will be something else that our anti-racism team will help bring to a second hour program uh, sometime hopefully later this year. Um, the second uh, action for this resolution was to recommend to the church council that we take steps towards paying the Shumi land tax. You may remember that our November um, mission moment or time for special, give, offer. special offering, <laughs> yeah, special offering was uh, for the Shumi land tax. And what that is, is it's a, an organization in Oakland that is seeking to develop a fund to help Native groups purchase back land that actually is theirs. And so they have asked individuals as well as uh, community organizations, businesses to pay a tax for the use of the land that they are on. So they have a recommended formula. And for our church, for nonprofit, uh, the, rec the formula came up with, um, I believe, 2000, about two th between two and $3,000. And so when we took that special offering, we actually made that in our special offering for this year. So we're very proud that our church recognized that this is something we might want to sponsor. But we want to make a recommendation actually to council to put it in as part of our budget in the coming year. And so um, doing so makes a statement that says that this is such an important thing for us to be able to uh, make amends and repair the relationship with our indigenous brothers and sisters that we want this to be a permanent um, offering to them. So that still has yet to be discussed. Maybe we, we will only be able to ask for a portion of that or you know, continue to make it a, a voluntary offering, but um, we are committed to um, following through with this um, resolution. All right. Um, I'll, t I'll go ahead and talk about the next resolution. And then at the end, we can have people ask questions or further the discussion. All right, so the next resolution is called Standing in Solidarity, Anti-Racism and Racial Justice Formation in Local Churches. So this resolution calls for us to all become more educated around anti-racism, not just have an anti-racism committee, but to commit to the congregation becoming more knowledgeable 
about anti-racism action. And so our anti-racism team, um, while we have done actions frequently, we've had educational events, we've had, um, we had that wonderful, um, I'm pointing to Kairos Hall, the, the anti-racism fair, yeah. right? Uh, we've done some different events, um, but what we are recommending is that we actually adopt a curriculum that our church participates in, uh, perhaps in a second hour format. We still are investigating what that curriculum looks like, but it would be something that would be both um, lay-led and pastorally led. Uh, both pastors want to be involved with our anti-racism curriculum, and so that helps um, that helps support the importance of, the, of our entire congregation being involved. We also would like to ask our commissioners and our committee chairs to have conversations at the commission and committee level around anti-racism and how their commission or committee could be um, participating in anti-racism action. So you may think of children's ministries, for example, Right now, I believe uh, Pastor Todd and Jen, the commissioner, are looking at a, um, an anti-racism children's curriculum that we could insert lessons throughout the year into the, um, into the children's ministry. So, you know, there's different things that each commission could possibly do to further our work and to help more people get involved in, um, in this at our church. So if you're on a commission, look, look for the conversation to happen. Hopefully in the next couple of months, we've given the commissioners um, a discussion guide that can help um, with that conversation. And also um, the members of our anti-racism team are happy to support any of those conversations. So if you're on a commission and you feel like you would like some support for that conversation, we're willing to come and support you. Uh, let's see. And then the, the last thing is that we want to make sure that the whole con uh, congregation knows about these resolutions. So in the upcoming um, church newsletter, we've posted an article that actually lists all of these resolutions and our actions. So we're just going to keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And then um, uh, hopefully this is this won't be a surprise to people that we're going to be embarking on these action steps over time. So with that, uh, I wanted to know if anyone had any questions or comments or things that you'd like to add. Maybe I forgot something. <laughs> Joyce and John and Mary Kay. No. Um, I emailed the discussion guides to the council right during the council meeting. Oh, hello, Zoom people. Um, <laughs> that um, the curriculum for the youth would be elementary all the way through high school. And I know Todd was anxious that the teens be involved with that. Yeah, great. Great. Okay. Pastor Eric, did you want to say a few words about pastoral involvement in the resolutions? Sure. Um, so I think it might go without saying that Pastor Todd and I are um, not only supportive of this movement in our church, but we're encouraged and excited about it. Um, <clears throat> when I think back uh, over a timeline of when some of these conversations first started, it was in May of 2020. Do you remember that? We were all at home and we were witnessing the brutality on our TV screens. And that generated a conversation among our congregation about what can we do? And um, these resolutions 
are moving us to become more informed, um, to be more informed in how we not only move and operate in our personal lives, but as a congregation, how we can become uh, and, and, and embrace being anti-racist as a congregation. And so we're really excited about this. Um, next week is the first Sunday of February. And um, in the spirit of um, collaboration and this movement that we are feeling and seeing here in our church, uh, Pastor Todd and I are working with the anti-racist team um, to uh, bring um, a more focused theme to our worship on the first three Sundays of uh, February for Black History, Black Futures Month. So our worship next week is going to feel a little bit different. Um, so instead of having a traditional sermon where I go up there and say, a few things and you may or may not listen. Um, we're gonna have members of our anti-racism team share reflections and worship about why this is so critical and important uh, for our ministry and our mission as a church. Uh, next week's service is gonna strike a different tone. We're gonna start Black History, Black Futures Month with a service of lament for anti-Black racism in our country and in our world and throughout our history. So it's gonna be a bit somber, more somber of a service. And then the second Sunday of February, our youth are gonna lead us uh, in worship around this theme of black history, black futures. And then the third Sunday of February, we're gonna be taking a more um, future oriented look and looking at the progress that has been made and the progress that continues. So um, we're hoping that this will not only be worshipful, um, but also be an opportunity to um, have some good adult faith formation happening right in our worship service. So we're striking and hitting a lot of people all at once, which is great. Those might not be the right words to use, striking and hitting, but um, those are the ones that came to mind uh, right now at this 11 o'clock hour for this senior pastor. So um, we're excited and we hope that you're on the journey with us. Um, and that if you have questions, wonderments, concerns, feedback, we're always welcome to hear that. So thank you. Any questions, John, from the Zoom folks? Uh, Doug, Doug shared a note that the next uh, NCNC annual gathering, June 15th to the 17th uh, this year, We'll continue to work toward becoming a, a racial justice conference. Wonderful. Um, yeah, Mary Kay. Tiny comment. I always get confused myself. What is NCCC, whatever that was that you just said? What were those? What does that stand for? It stands for the Northern California Nevada Conference. How that actually is organized and who's part of that, you have to help. I don't know. I think it's all the congregation. Sure. So let's do a little polity 101. Um, so our church, our local church is Danville Congregational Church, and we're affiliated with a network of churches called the Bay Association. So churches that are in our general geographic area. Each association within our conference is then affiliated with the Northern California Nevada Conference, which stretches from Reno all the way up to Eureka, down to Monterey and back. So that whole geographical area. The conference is not an office. It's not a minister, right? We have conference ministers. Um, it's not a staff of people. It's all of us. So when we say the conference, we're referring to all of us that are in covenant with one another in the Northern California Nevada Conference. Okay, all of us UCCers. Great, thank you. Good question, Mary Kay. All right, uh, Bruce. What opportunities might there be to participate with other churches through Interfaith Council or what other means? 
All right. So Bruce is asking about opportunities for participation from the congregation. So aside from just attending things, um, you can also uh, spread the word that we are working on these issues with other congregants who might not be here. Um, we want to make sure that uh, people are always notified and welcome to our anti-racism team meetings, where we do a lot of the planning and learning about some of these issues amongst ourselves. Anyone can join our meetings. We publish them in the weekly Thursday newsletter. And so please come and be a part of our planning team and advanced learning team or whatever we want to call ourselves. Um, we want to be that we want to help facilitate this conversation, but by no means are we experts at this com at this conversation. Um, we're learning right alongside all of you, and everyone is welcome to join us. Um, we will be um, talking about forming the uh, land acknowledgments, and so we'd love to have people come to our meeting where we're talking about that. Um, so. You know, just look for the announcements. We, there's a weekly newsletter that's published online every Thursday. Hopefully you all have your email tuned to that. And if not, just contact the church office and they'll get you listed on that. And um, I think that's, that's about it. All right. Any other questions or comments? Yes, John. So uh, Doug made a comment that the Multi-Faith Action Coalition is a racial justice task force. Uh, contact Doug if you're interested. Yeah, one other thing. We also have uh, lots of educational information on our church webpage, the anti-racism webpage, which you can find if you look at that top bar, it's under resources. And also, if you just click on the picture that rotates across the screen, that will also lead you to our anti-racism um, webpage. And there's all kinds of local learning opportunities if you want to do some of this work um, outside of the church as well. D. This question might be a little more specific, but I was at the church council meeting and when they wanted the commissions to do something, personally couldn't think of anything buildings and grounds could do. So if you have any suggestions on what might be done there, sure would appreciate that. I actually do. <laughs> Hold on, Carol. I have a question probably directed towards Eric. Um, I was wondering if the we're starting the the Black History, Black Future thing in February, is that going to carry over? Is that theme going to carry over to Lent? So our our Lenten theme is um, seeking honest questions for deeper faith. Um, and so this question of uh, maybe the role of um, anti-racism work uh, from a faith perspective could appear, but um, a general theme, it's not specific to anti-racism, that's going to be covered more in those first three Sundays in February. Yeah, I, I, I can talk with you more, Dee, about the ideas for buildings and grounds, because I do have some um, a suggestion, and that would be to incorporate some of our music during church service that would coordinate with uh, anti-racism themes, particularly if John would explain the background of a music selection that might work. Yeah, if you uh, if you remember during COVID, he did that. He would he gave us lots of background on the composers of the music. That's that's a great suggestion. Hmm. I was just going to say during the wow service, the music that came from this piano and amazing musicians was incredible. And I would love to see that again. <laughs> right. So you can hear right now just some ideas that people are having for various commissions 
to participate in uh, anti-racism work. So if we've got our worship commission who might be talking about the music that's delivered during the services, uh, buildings and grounds might talk about where to put the plaque or the, the statement of anti-racism somewhere on our church grounds. Maybe there's some artwork we could have or um, uh, land acknowledgement dedications that we could do here. I mean, there's uh, there's several different things. Yes, John. So Doug had another, um, just an example of ways to participate. The Interfaith Council of uh, Contra Costa County meets monthly for interfaith dialogue. And the council has a social justice alliance that meets monthly on Zoom. So some additional ways to get involved. And I'm sure Doug would love to talk to you about more. Yes, Doug is our local leadership guru. He knows a lot about different organizations that um, do this work as well. Anything else? All right, I wanna thank all of you for your time today. This was just a brief introduction. We'll definitely have many more conversations about this in the coming year. And I thank you for coming today. Have a great rest of the day. Try to stay dry. I hope it's not gonna rain. <laughs>